Hello friends! Today we're going to be doing a very exciting video and it's inspired by my favourite makeup YouTuber, Julia Adams, who does tournaments for like each category of makeup. She'll do bronzer tournaments, blush tournaments. And today we're going to be doing a five star tournament. We're going to be doing a bracket tournament of all of my five stars that I've had so far this year to see what comes out on top. Now, I do want to say, I originally scheduled when I was planning out my videos, I scheduled this video for August. But for this bracket, I wanted 16 entries to make it equal on all sides. I've just decided to go ahead and do this video now before it gets to the end of the year because I've still only had 13 five stars this year. <laughs> this is what trauma looks like. We know I've been having this problem. So on the bracket, I have put three, my top three 4.5s that probably should just be fives if I'm honest. Like I kind of view them as fives. I have put those in as well. And who knows, I could pick them over one of the five stars based on the vibes today. I was looking actually on my reading tracker for last year. And at this point last year, I had had 24 five stars. I've had 13. That's almost double. I've almost had double the five stars last year that I've had so far this year. It's been a rough year. <laughs> But I'm hoping uh, some of my videos and some of my books that I'm reading towards the end of this year may <sighs> emerge supreme, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty heartbreaking. I'm hoping for some more five stars. But with this bracket tournament, as you can see, we've got pairs that will go up against each other. I think I know what will end up winning. I think I know what's my favorite book so far this year, but I'm more interested to see what wins out of the other pairings. I'll give you a brief synopsis of each of the books as we go through them um, and what I thought of them. But yeah, shall we just get into it? I'm really excited. Pairing at number one. <laughs> We have got Legends and Lattes by Travis Bowdry versus The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. Okay, so Legends and Lattes, I mean, we all know what that is. <laughs> It's a cozy fantasy about an orc group as a coffee shop. It was the first book I read this year and it continued my trend that I like to try and achieve of my first book of the year being five stars. It's very important to me. I'm very superstitious. I will not have a good year if my first book of the year isn't five stars. Like, it really is a lot of pressure. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. So I have to read one that I know is gonna be five stars. So I loved that one. I just, I still have such fond memories of reading it. It is a hug of a book. I mean, everyone loves it and rightly so. Um, it is just, it, it, I don't even, it's perfection. <laughs> I can't put it into words. It is a perfect book. It is lovely. It is heartwarming. It is cozy. It is meaningful. It's incredible. And I wish, I've read more cozy fantasy this year and like nothing has compared, you know? Nothing has reached the heights of Versions <laughs> and Latte. It's set, it's set such a high barrier for me. But The Weight of Blood I did really love and it was an important book for me because Tiffany Jackson has always been an author whose synopses I've loved, right? But I'd read two other books from her before this and I think they'd been a two and a three? Maybe even like a 2.5, I don't know. I hadn't really loved either of them. And so I'd said, I'd given myself an ultimatum when I read The Weight of Blood because I said like, if I don't love this, I'm not gonna read Tiffany D. Jackson again because it's not fair, right? It's not fair on an author for me to like keep picking up their stuff if I'm not enjoying it because chances are I'm not gonna enjoy the next book. You know what I mean? And this is a carry retelling and I just loved it. I thought the writing was wonderful. I thought it was a great way horror. The mixed media in it was great. I mean, granted I have not read Carrie, so I don't know what, how much I loved of The Weight of Blood was like stuff that it had taken from Carrie that I was like, oh my God, that's so imaginative, but it's something that Carrie does. Do you know what I mean? But I loved it, but we know what the winner's gonna be and it's gonna be Legends and Lattes. Like, <laughs> I think that trend is going to continue. There's no way I'm gonna play for so next pairing is The Burning Issue of the Day versus The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett, which I looked up. It still isn't out in the US. I'm sorry for all of you in the US who are like, I've made one to read it. Uh, I tried to not talk about it too much because all of Janice Hallett's books are like a year behind publishing in the US, which makes no sense to me. Anyways, uh, The Burning Issue of the Day is a Lady Hardcastle mystery. This one were with suffragettes, like one of a suffragette or suffragists. I, I'm not, I can't remember which one they were, but one of them was accused of murder and Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo are trying to prove that it wasn't her, basically, are trying to help them out. This is my favourite murder mystery series. At this point, it's a series that's greater than some of its parts. Like, the series is a five star series to me. I love Lady Hardcastle. I love her maid Flo. I love their dynamic. I love the historical setting. I kind of alternate, I feel like, now between giving these a, a five and a 4.5. Like, they, in, the books individually may not be like a five star, but the series is a five star. The audiobooks, if you're gonna read these, I always say, if you're gonna read these, read them via the audiobooks. I get the physical and the audio because I love them so much. <laughs> but if you wanna try them out, 
not try them out with the audiobook because the audiobook narrator is incredible. The Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels is a mixed media book entirely through mixed media about, oh, the synopsis is always so hard. <laughs> but basically there was a cult where people died and there was a baby and it's journalists trying to uncover the truth and trying to find out who the baby is because the baby was like put into like the care system um, trying to figure out who the baby was all these years on. And this one I think is an easy battle because I think it's got to go to the mysterious case of the Appleton Angels because like I said, the Burning Issue today kind of gets a five star because the series is a five star, not because the book is necessary. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's a softer five star. I love them dearly, but it's greater than the the series is greater than the sum of its parts. Whereas the mysterious case of the Appleton Angels was the first time I'd ever given Janice Hallett a five star, and I just thought the 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 twists and turns throughout the book were paced really well. The mixed media was had a lot of variety, which had been a problem for me with Janice Hallett before. So the mysterious case of the Appleton Angels wins. The next pairing is interesting. We've got nothing to see here by Kevin Wilson versus. Snow White Learns Witchcraft by Theodora Gross. I don't know which one I'm gonna go with for this. So nothing to see here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird, magical, realism y, fabulous -y book about um, this woman who helps out an old friend of hers by looking after the woman's stepchildren who spontaneously combust. She like moves into the house to look after these kids and the kids spontaneously combust. And it's a story of found family and a story of love, you know, love transcending blood and, you know, really how to be there for kids who have gone through severe trauma is what the book is about. And it's also, there's like weird, like sapphic undertones to it. I have a gay bone and I need to explore that a little bit more. It's, I really enjoyed it. Snow White and Witchcraft is by Theodora Gross. If you remember, if you know the name. <laughs> author of my favourite series ever, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, the Athena Club series. And um, this one's short stories and poems. Oh, this one's, um, okay. <laughs> there was, I think in this, all of the short stories were like five stars. I rated them individually as I went along. There was, I remember one that's like, it's all based on fairy tales and like, you know, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty. There's a Sleeping Beauty one where like, it goes through the perspective of all the, different characters and different elements within the Sleeping Beauty story. Like there's one from the, I think the perspective of the castle, there's one from the perspective of the, the, the thing that Sleeping Beauty pricks her finger on, I can't remember that. <laughs> but it was really interesting. The Snow White one was really interesting. I loved, I loved, loved, loved the short stories in this. And it was amazing reading more from Theodora Goss because she doesn't have any other novels other than the Athena Club series, which like breaks my heart. But it was really fun to read more from her. But the poems were like, I don't know, I don't often give poems five stars. So I decided to give this five stars more based on the short stories in it. So I think I'm gonna have to go with nothing to see here, but that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I think I've got to go with nothing to see here by Kevin Wilson, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I just think nothing to see here was, you know, then th it's easier for me to pick that because the whole novel was five stars. Whereas with Snow White and Judith Craft, with an anthology, you're never gonna give every single item in an anthology five stars, you know? There's gonna be things you prefer to other other parts. So I gave it a five star as a rating because I did love it, but not everything in that was a five star. So I think we've gotta go nothing to see here. Next one is Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village by Maureen Johnson and Jay Cooper. And Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Okay, interesting one. So Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village is like a little graphic novel, almost. Kind of taking the mick out of the murder mystery genre, which I love, I loved this. It's so fun. I'll take like 20 minutes to read if you get your hands on it. And it goes through like the traditional suspects, the house, the locations, the murder weapons, and it's like making fun of it. I loved it. <laughs> ah, that's history. <laughs> I love anything that makes fun of a genre. I love murder mysteries that kind of poke fun at the murder mystery genre or think of an imaginative way to like use the the uh, tropes that you see a lot in the genre. And I just thought this was so much fun. I loved it. I'd love to read more stuff like this. But Finley Donovan is Killing It, you know, is a book that you guys told me to read for years and years and years. I still haven't read the sequel, but I own the next one. And I loved Finley Donovan is Killing It. It's my kind of book. And you all knew it would be, you know, it's fun, ridiculous. <laughs> Loved the drama of it. I cannot wait to continue in the series. I think Finney Donovan is killing it has got to win because again, it just feels more major, you know? Oh, flippity jib. Okay, I think the next pairing is the most difficult one of these initial pairings. We've got The Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill versus The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I can't, I 
can't make this decision. Please, I can't make this decision. These are up there as some of my favorite books of the year. These might even be like my second and third favorite books of the year. I don't know how I'm supposed to decide. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> So the Tea Dragon Festival, you guys know, is a graphic novel, part of a graphic novel series that I love, where you're following these tea dragons who can like brew tea and following these characters who live in the towns with them. And this was just a beautiful, beautiful graphic novel. I loved it so much. Her novel's always really inclusive. There's a character in this who I think is deaf and the whole village has learned sign language to be able to communicate with them. I just love what these stories say. I love their messaging. I just love, they're my favorite graphic novels. Mm. I love Heartstripper as well. <laughs> Let me not get it myself, but I do love them. And the writing retreat by Julia Bartz is wackadoo. I know it's wackadoodle time, okay? It's wackadoodle time. <laughs> it's wackadoodle time. It is wackadoodle time. The writing retreat by Julia Bartz is about these women who go to this like prestigious writing retreat and shit starts occurring. I don't even know where to sum this one up. Um, it's very controversial. It's not a high enough rating to be nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards, which is very heartbreaking. By the way, guys, I, I said this on my um Instagram story yesterday, but the other night I had a dream about <laughs> the Goodreads Choice Awards, like, nominees being announced. And, uh, <laughs> and it was, like, really obscure bo books for the mystery thriller category. It was, like, books I'd never heard of and I'd never felt such panic. But the one book that was nominated that I had heard of was The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. And I was like, well, at least now The Last Devil to Die <laughs> Anyways, that it was like a crazy dream. It was so vivid. Anyways, this, okay, this is so tricky because I feel so defensive of the writing retreat because it's got such low rating. Everyone hated it. Um, <laughs> but I loved it. I think it's genius. I think it's incredible. Um, but I love the Tea Dragon series. It's like, up how do I choose? I'm gonna go with the writing retreat because I don't remember the entire plot. <laughs> the tea dragon the festival like I can't remember all the elements of the plot and so as much as I love it I feel like the writing retreat I have a better memory of it so I feel like that one has got to go ahead Fuck, that was horrible that was like heart, heart crushing next pairing is the unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer Smith and her majesty's royal coven by Juno Dawson okie dokie so the unsinkable Greta James is a contemporary <laughs> which I loved so much. It's about this woman whose mum has recently died and her parents had booked to go on this cruise together and she kind of goes in her mum's place. And it's to do with her grief for her mother, it's to do with her dad's grief for her mother. She's also famous, like a famous singer and it's often fame or whatever, but I was more interested in the grief aspect of it. And I bawled like multiple times, like sobbing, 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 ugly crying. Like <laughs> it really got me. I thought it was subtly poignant, but like also it's not, you know, this is, this is one of the five stars I feel hesitant to recommend because it is like a fairly simple book. I don't think everyone's gonna love it, but like it hit me. It got me on the day that I needed it, you know? Um, Her Majesty's Royal Coven is about a witchy coven. Well, witches, it's about witches. It's about the governmental like department of witches, but it's also just about this group of, of witchy friends who grew up together and were following all their different lives in this storyline. And I think I've got to put forward Her Majesty's Royal Coven because I would more widely recommend it to people. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd more widely recommend that people pick that one up. I'm more confident in my... <laughs> in my recommendation of it. But yeah, I loved the writing. I loved the plot. There's a, there's a whole route that this book goes down that I don't want to talk about because I think it should be, you should you should go into this book not really knowing about it. It's, I wouldn't call it a spoiler, but I think your reading experience would be much better if you don't, I didn't know it was going to go down that route in that direction. So, but yeah, I loved it. Next one. Okay, so we've got our last five star, which is Emma by Jane Austen. I haven't spoken to you guys about this because I just read it at the start of October and it was for my Patreon book club. So I spoke about it over there. I did a discussion live show and a reading vlog over there, but you guys weren't. I haven't spoken to you about it. I kept it a secret. <laughs> and we got the first of our 4.5 stars, which is The House of Good Bones. Now you would think I would just immediately pick the five star, but not necessarily. So Emma has become one of my favorite classics. It was a soft five star and I was like, I don't know if this is like five star, five star, but it's like a five star classic for me. I loved it. It is about a girl called Emma who's like meddling in romantic affairs around her. And it's very interesting because it's kind of Jane Austen's version of an unknown unlikable narrator, unlikable main character, um, which is a very interesting choice for her to have made. And it's made me obsessed
obsessed with Jane Austen. Like I'm ready to fall down the Jane Austen rabbit hole. I've been watching Jane Austen documentaries. I want to read Jane Austen like non-fiction books. I'm obsessed. Now, House of Good Bones by T. King Fisher, I loved as well. It's a horror book about a woman who returns home and her mother is acting weird and like acting like her old racist grandma and like there was weird stuff going on in the house. Uh, but I have got to go with the five star. <laughs> which is Emma. I loved it. I was so shocked by how much I loved it. It's funny. It's funny. Jane Austen's funny. She's like a comedian. She said, let me write some jokes. I loved it. And then our final two, which are 4.5 stars, but like really on another, on another day, these would be five stars. You know what I mean? All of these 4.5s, I really should just have given them all five stars. <laughs> We've got The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and Mexican Gothic by Silva Ramona Garcia. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, you've probably heard of both these. They're both kind of horror-esque. The Southern Book Club's Guide is about this group of mums <laughs> who run a book club and maybe a vampire moves into town and maybe they have to like kill him. This is kind of what the title tells you, but like I loved the look at, I think it's in the 1990s, and the look at a woman's role and the, the role of a mother in this time, the expectations on them, it definitely examines that a lot. And Mexican Gothic, you guys know, oh, what? hang on, spoilers. <laughs> We're following a character, Noemi, is that her name? Whose cousin has married this guy and she's getting bad vibes so she decides to go visit her cousin where she's now living with that guy's family and it's a horror and it's creepy and it's weird. I think I'm gonna go with the Southern Book Club's Guide. This is like out of all my 4.5s of the year, the one that should have been a five star. I think I read it a little bit broken up but I think if I'd read it like the whole way through unbroken, and a bit quicker, I think it absolutely would have been a five star. Okie dokie, now these, are, we're gonna speed up a little bit now because I don't have to give you the synopses. Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. Okay, oh, Legends and Lattes versus the Mysterious Case of the Appleton Angels. Um, uh, it's gotta be Legends and Lattes. It's not really difficult, is it? <laughs> Uh, I love Mysterious Case of the Angels, but Legends and Lattes, it just did something to me. I can't wait to reread it and reread it and reread it. I can't wait for bookshops and bone dust to come out, guys. I've already got pre-ordered. But I probably won't read it this year, before the end of the year, um, which is like rude, but <laughs> but I am um, I'm really excited for it. I'm a bit nervous because it is a prequel and I sometimes struggle with prequels because I feel like nothing is going to shock me because if anything shocking were to have happened, I would have known about it in the other book. You know what I mean? So I am a bit nervous about that, but it's Legends and Lattes. <laughs> Next pairing, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson versus Finley Donovan is Killing It. This one is tricky. This one is tricky. Nothing to See Here is a book that I feel like I can recommend to like a lot of people in my life. Like it's probably the book out of all of these here that I feel like I can recommend to my mom, to my boyfriend's mom, to like grandparent, like a friend. Like I feel like it's a book that's very widely recommendable. So that's in its favor. But Finley Donovan is more my kind of book. I think it's doing more of what I love and I think it's examining the genre that I love and tropes that I love a bit more. So I think I'm gonna go with Finny Donovan is killing it. That's what I'm gonna go with. Okie dokie. Oh look, it's like it's like mirrored because they followed the same path. <laughs> okay, the writing retreat versus Her Majesty's Royal Coven. <gasps> Again, Her Majesty's Royal Coven is the one I would recommend more widely. I think I gotta go with the writing retreat here. I just, I feel so defensive of her. <laughs> I just think she deserves the world and everything more. I just, I don't understand. Well, I do understand why everyone hated it, but I don't. <laughs> I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. I just loved it. I just think, oh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> it just is crazy and it's weird and it's wacky and it's like, I always pick, pitched it as um, Catherine House meets Bunny. It's got the kind of female relationship, weird kind of, like dependent, strange dynamic relationship, uh, female relationship of Bunny. And it's got the weirdness and the unsettling and the like claustrophobia and like not everything kind of making sense of um, Catherine House. So I would widely recommend it. And then we've got Emma versus Southern Book Club's Guys Saying Vampires. This one's tricky. This one could actually go either way. Um, but I think I'm in my Jane Austen era, so I've got to go with Emma. <laughs> You don't get it. You don't get it. I love her. <laughs> I've watched like hour long Jane Austen documentaries. I, Lucy Worsley. I was saying this, what video was I saying? I think I was saying it to my patrons in a video, but um, Lucy Worsley is my favorite historian. I don't know if that's weird to have a favorite historian. That's not normal. And I think 
you know, she maybe get some help or something. She's the one who did the Agatha Christie book, which I haven't read, but I read part of it when I did the Agatha Christie disappearance video. She's done all these stuff on Jane Austen as well. And she's got a book about Jane Austen, which I am now going to have to read. I don't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> so I think I'm in next year is gonna be my classics era, my Jane Austen era. Next one, oh, okay. Legends and Lattes versus Finley Donovan is killing it. <gasps> <laughs> I mean, it's tricky, but I mean... It's also not tricky. <laughs> Listen, I'm hoping for the drama and for the excitement that I am hoping that something will edge out Legends and Lattes as my favourite book of the year before the end of the year. I think Rich Lossman and Last Devil to Die could do it. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, then we have got The Writing Retreat versus Emma. This one's tricky again. I mean, here's the thing. Emma is a classic. <laughs> In terms of what has greater, like, societal endorsement and agreement, it is Emma. You know, like everyone hates the writing retreat, whereas Emma has stood the test of time for like 200 years. But alas, I, I just have to follow my feelings and it's the writing retreat. Wow, I didn't expect the writing retreat to make it this far. I expected Legend of Lattes, but I did not expect the writing retreat to make it this far. I just think it's great. I don't understand what is wrong with all you people who hate it. You're just wrong. You're just wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. <laughs> and then our final battle is between Legends and Lattes and the writing retreat. And I'm, I'm sorry, we all know what's coming. Legends and Lattes has to be our winner. I knew Legends and Lattes would be our winner. Okay, I knew it. But I'm interested, it was interesting to see what came out on top in the other categories. But Legends and Lattes is still my favorite book that I've read this year. That's kind of like, I don't like it though. I don't like, I don't like that, that that's the fact. I don't like, that's no drama. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's no drama to that. Where's the drama to that? Where is the drama to that? Like Legends and Lattes being my favorite book I've read this year. Hmm. Like, that's not exciting. It was the first book I read this year. Nothing's topped it. So it is my mission that I'm going to read a book the rest of this year that I prefer to Legends and Lattes. And I think it, it, Rich Osman is our only hope. Rich Osman is our only hope. Can't you save us, Britney Spears? Can we be saved? So anyways, that was my five star tournament of the five stars that I have had so far this year. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely want to do this again, like next year. Hopefully it will be earlier in the year <laughs> because uh, I would hope that I'd reach 16 five stars quicker than I have so far this year. 13 five stars at this point in the year. I had 24 this point in the year. That is actually... Pfft, terrible. It's actually very sad. Anyways, let me know what you thought of any of these books. Let me know if you thought I made any of the wrong decisions <laughs> in my ranking. And if you got to the end, comment this heart emoji. This is like my new favourite heart emoji. Comment that heart emoji down below if you got to the end. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!